Hello, welcome to Vedial Vagaparai. In this video, we are going to see conductometric titrations. Uh, this conductometric titration is, uh, is a very popular uh, analytical method that is uh, done at undergraduate chemistry. This particular question is based on IIT JAM 2017 question. Uh, this uh, uh, video will be useful for uh, those of us who are taking UGTRB examination and also students who are uh, attempting IIT JAM uh, and uh, CUTE PG examinations or CSIR examination. This is one of the very important topics in analytical chemistry. Okay, let us see the question first. In a typical conductometric titration of a strong acid with a weak base, the curve resembles. So, in this question, we see uh, that uh, they are saying what is the representation? There are four graphical representations that are given here. And they are asking us to spot the representation that matches with a strong acid with a strong base curve. So, um, before that, we must first understand what is conductometric titration, how it is done, what are the advantages, disadvantages, and what are the precautions we have to take uh, while doing these titrations when we do it in our laboratory experiments. And also, how to plot the graph and uh, what are the information we can decipher from the graph that is presented here. So, first and foremost, we will understand what is conductometric titrations. So, from uh, the name itself we know uh, it is a titration and it involves con uh, electrochemical method, it is an electrochemical method, it involves conduction of current. So, uh, this is actually the uh, experimental setup. If uh, all of us who have studied uh, undergrad chemistry would have done this in our uh, undergrad practicals. Uh, or also sometimes even in our postgrad practicals in our physical chemistry experiments. So, when uh, you see this experimental setup, we have the conductivity meter and then we have the conductivity cell which is immersed in the burette, sorry, in the beaker solution and then there is also a micro burette that is provided here. This micro burette uh, is having volumes up to 10 ml only because um, we will see that uh, the concentration of uh, the titrant will be very high when compared to the one that is at the beaker. So, all of these concerns we will see in the next uh, few slides. First and foremost, let us understand the principle of this particular titrimetric method. So, when we talk about conductance of an electrolyte, we know conductance depends on number of free ions, the charges of the free ions and then the mobility of the ions. So, all of these will tell us whether there is a good conductance or whether the particular material or a liquid is a poor conductor or the conductance is low. So, this basic uh, phenomenon is the one which forms the basis for the conductometric titrations. So, what happens in case of conductometric titrations is um, we are going to see how the mobility of the ion decreases or increases based on substitution. So, the principle of conductometric titration is based on the fact that during the titration, one of the ion is replaced by the other and invariably these two ions differ in ionic conductivity with the result that conductivity of the solution varies during the course of the titration. So, this is simply what we have stated first. So, the mobility of the ions will change accordingly conductance will change. So, this change in conductance will help us to understand the titration and we can even identify the end point of the titration. So, that is what we are going to do. So, when we have done a normal titration, whenever we do normal titration, we know we will calculate the end point of a reaction wherein uh, we use an indicator and the color change of the indicator will help us to find the end point of the titration. Whereas, we all know equivalence point is one of, is the point at which the exact neutralization happens in a uh, volumetric analysis. But when we are using indicators, we only calculate the end point, not the equivalence point. So, the end point is a volume after the equivalence point. But whereas, when we use conductometric titrations, we can calculate the equivalence point because we can identify the exact volume that is needed for exact neutralization of the uh, two substances, the acids and bases that are being used. So, the equivalence point can be re re uh, located 
and how can we locate the equivalence point we cannot locate it by just observing the conductance we have to plot it on a graph we have to make a graphical representation and using a graphical representation only we can identify the equivalence point of this particular titration so what are the advantages first and foremost uh, when we are doing our normal volumetric analysis we know it is the color change that is important and then when we talk about color change all of us have different level of perception of the intensity of the color and accordingly our theta values will be different so uh, that could lead to errors in our calculations and sometimes the solutions which are turbid which are highly colored cannot be studied using our normal volumetric analysis but these solutions can be studied using this particular method because um, it is only about the ions and their mobility and it has nothing to do with the physical state whether the solution is turbid or whether it is highly colored and secondly even very dilute solutions uh, can be studied using this particular method and finally in, a, in volumetric analysis, we cannot do a titration of a weak acid versus a weak base. But then here, we can also do this particular titration and we can find the equivalence point. So, this is actually a very advantageous method when compared to our normal volumetric titrations in our quantitative analysis. So, here also, uh, we know again it is titration because this, uh, one, one of the solution is in the burette another solution is in the beaker here we do not see the color change but we will observe the conductance so here the numbers will continue to change so as the conductance increases this number will begin to increase as the conductance decreases this number will start to decrease so addition of the titrant to the solution in the beaker will either increase the conductance or will decrease the conductance Accordingly, we can plot our graph. So, what are the precautions we must take when we are doing this particular titration? Always, as I told you, we have taken a semi uh, microburette for this particular analysis. So, this titration must use a microburette because the titrant should be at least 10 times concentrated as the solution to be determined. In the sense, for example, if you are going to do the determination of 0 0.01 molar hydrochloric acid, the titrant is sodium hydroxide. That is, in the beaker, we will be having 0 0.01 molar HCl and the burette solution will be sodium hydroxide. So, the strength of the burette solution must be 0 0.1. So, it, will, it should be highly concentrated when compared to the hydrochloric acid that is taken uh, in the beaker. So, why is this done? By this way, dilution that takes place during titration is minimum and this is necessary because conductivity decreases with dilution. So, this is to prevent dilution. So, we, we keep the minimum volume so that we do not have issues with conductivity, decrease in conductivity due to dilution. The next uh, Thing. avoid the presence of ions which will not take part in the reaction such as the presence of buffer or concentrated acids. So, this also we must be careful in the sense uh, whenever we are doing these conductivity titrations all solutions that we are preparing must be prepared using conductivity water in the sense deionized de water. So, if we do not use deionized water then there could be possibility of other ions which could interfere with the analysis. So, these ions will increase the initial conductivity and its change during the titration will be comparatively small and cannot be accurately observed. So, they will cause unnecessary uh, changes to our results. And finally, this method is suitable for detecting the end point in neutralization reaction, complexation reaction and precipitation reaction. So, you, we cannot employ this titration, titr conductivity titration method for redox reactions. So, 
only neutralization reactions, complexation and precipitation reactions can be studied using conductometric titrations. Redox reactions can be studied using potentiometric method, potentiometric titration method. Okay, that is that we will see on another video as and when it is required. So, now coming to the types of conductometric titrations. So, all of these are neutralization titrations. So, when I say neutralization titrations, it is a titration of a acid versus a base. So, when we talk about titration of an acid base versus a base, so it, the first and foremost is the common uh, combination which is strong acid versus strong base. Next will be strong acid versus weak base, weak acid versus strong base and weak acid versus weak base. So, these are all the different combinations of uh, acid and bases and all of these are neutralization titrations. Besides this, suppose if we are having a mixture of strong acid and weak base, then we can also titrate them and find the answer. Also, if we have a mixture of, uh, of strong acid and weak base, we can titrate it versus either a strong base or a weak base and we can find the answer. And of course, precipitation titration and complex, complex forming titrations are also uh, other uh, titrimetric methods which could be studied using conductometric titri titration methods. But then in this video, we are going to only see the first five category. So, first let us see strong acid versus a strong base. So, as we all know HCl and sodium hydroxide will form sodium chloride and water and we know H is actually H plus and Cl minus, sodium hydroxide is Na plus and OH minus. As I told you in the pre previous slides itself, the burette solution will be sodium hydroxide. So, this will be a highly concentrated solution and the solution that we are taking in the beaker is HCl. So, in this particular method, we are doing a simple titration and this titration does not have an indicator. And so, as we add sodium hydroxide to HCl, the initial concentration of H plus ion will start to decrease. Suppose we are having 10 H plus ions. The moment we add one sodium hydroxide ion, then the number of remaining H plus ions will become 9. So, as we add HCl to sodium, sorry, sodium hydroxide to HCl, the number of H plus ions will start to decrease. And we are actually measuring the conductivity. So, the HCl is having the conductivity cell immersed in it and conduction is studied. So, initially the value will be high, conductance value will be high and as we add sodium hydroxide, the conductance value will start to decrease. So, in our graph, we will be plotting, so in the notebook, we will be actually making a table of volume of sodium hydroxide and then the conductance. We will be measuring these two terms and uh, as we add sodium hydroxide, we will be noting down the conductance also. So, in total, what we will see here will be the graph when we plot, we are plotting the graph between conductance and sodium, volume of sodium hydroxide measured in ml. So, from 0 volume, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, let us assume we are, the, we are uh, dispensing 1 ml at a time for this particular titration. So, initially in the beaker, we have HCl and so its conductance will be very high. So, we have not added any sodium hydroxide, it is 0 and so its conductance will be very high here. But as we add 1 ml of sodium hydroxide, the number of H plus ions will go down and so conductance decreases. So, this will continue to happen till it reaches the equivalence point where all the HCl has been completely neutralized by sodium hydroxide. So, now after the equivalence point, what we will have in excess will be sodium hydroxide. This is what happens in our normal titration also. So, when we add phenolphthalein indicator, uh, uh, HCl is in the being a conical flask, let us assume HCl is in the conical flask, we add the indicator, the indicator will be colorless in HCl. But as we add the sodium hydroxide, at the end point, 
with the excess of sodium hydroxide the colorless indicator will become pale pink in color so we tell the uh, titration is complete so only when we add excess of this reagent the indicator color changes likewise here in this particular titration after the equivalence point any excess of sodium hydroxide will have oh minus ions so there is no more hcl now it will have the the beaker will be having excess of sodium hydroxide ions so the sodium hydroxide has oh minus ions which is also having a fairly good conductance so its conductance is about 198 so automatically the conductivity begin to increase with increase in sodium hydroxide so this curve is due to sodium hydroxide alone whereas this curve is due to decrease in concentration of H plus ion. So, the meeting point of these two curve, sorry, these two lines will give you a volume. So, this is the neutralization point or the equivalence point. So, in this particular titrimetric method, we all know, we know the law of chemical equivalence V1 N1 is equal to V2 N2. So, by conductometric method, we will calculate this volume. So, uh, let, uh, let us assume that uh, we know the strength of uh, HCl. We know the uh, volume of HCl taken because we measure the volume and only take it. So, V1, N1 we will know. V2 we will calculate from this particular value we have obtained. So, V2 will be obtained graphically. And from these three values, we can calculate the strength of sodium hydroxide. So, this is how we calculate the strength and from there we can calculate the amount. So, once we get the details in our uh, uh, chemical equivalence notation, then the other follow up is like our regular normal titrations. But then uh, the way by which we get the V2 is by using electrochemical method which is our conductivity titration. So, next is the HCl versus dilute ammonia. Dilute ammonia is nothing but ammonium hydroxide. So, HCl is a strong acid, ammonium hydroxide is a weak base and of course, because HCl is in excess, uh, is exclusively there in the beaker, so conductance will be very high. So, as ammonium hydroxide is added, the number of H plus ions will go down and as a result, we will see the conductance will decrease. So, it will decrease, continue to decrease till a point of neutralization. And after the neutralization, we see ammonium hydroxide is a weak base. It is not as ionized as sodium hydroxide. So, we see that the line remains a straight line because of the poor ionizing capacity of ammonium hydroxide in the presence of ammonium chloride. And that is why we see the graph to show this. So, experimentally what we will see, the value of conductance will slowly decrease and after the end point or equivalence point, the value will remain nearly constant. So, that is an indicator, this is a titration of a strong acid versus a weak base. Next kind of titration is a weak acid versus a strong base. So, in case of a weak acid, the popular weak acid is acetic acid. So, we know it is, um, it will not ionize completely in solution, it will be existing in equilibrium. So, it will have a lesser, uh, you know, conductance. See the conductance, when we saw HCl, HCl value was very high, conductance is 350. So, the value is very high, but acetic acid has poor conductance. So, that is the reason why on the y axis, we see the value is starting at the lower end of the graph on the y axis. So, acetic acid has poor conductance that is why it is uh, well below. Then as sodium hydroxide is added, the acetic acid uh, uh, is becoming sodium acetate. So, slowly the H plus ions are removed and then it is becoming water that is why the, con uh, you know, the conductivity decreases. But then it is not sharp because it is existing in equilibrium with uh, uh, sodium acetate. And this sodium acetate is also an ionic species. So, the presence of this particular 
ionic species also you know is having some level of conductance and so we see there is a slight dip and then slightly increases due to the conductance of the acetate ion sodium acetate ion so it increases and after the equivalence point it is going to be absolutely extra sodium hydroxide so at initially here it is the h plus ion and here it is due to the acetate ion sodium acetate ion and finally it is going to be due to the oh minus ion and this h plus is due to the uh, acetic acids uh, proton and so this proton cannot be uh, is is uh, uh, remote but then the conductance is not as high as a strong acid so this is the relationship between a weak acid and a strong base and uh, this is how the plot will uh, represent in this particular case next we will see weak acid and a weak base again we know as we saw in the previous slide the acetic acid is very poorly ionized so it is well below in conductance the value is well below in conductance and as sodium hydroxide neutralizes acetic acid then then we have the ammonium acetate ion that is formed so you have an increase because of the ionic species of ammonium acetate and after the equivalence point it is excess of ammonium hydroxide so ammonium hydroxide is not also a poorly dissociated uh, base so you see though it is having a higher conductance but still it is having a nearly same value because as we increase the ammonium hydroxide it is not going to drastically increase the um, uh, you know uh, the conductance value because it is not well ionized so that is why we see a nearly straight line uh, with the excess of ammonium hydroxide now finally the mixture of acids so suppose i am having a mixture of strong acid and a strong uh, and a weak uh, weak acid and then i am titrating them versus a strong base let us consider case 1 case 1 now now what i am discussing is interaction of a mixture of strong acid and a weak acid with a strong base so the burette solution is sodium hydroxide and then the solution in the beaker is hcl and Um, uh, and then a weak acid is acetic acid so now let us see the graph so this graph i have put it up before itself so in this graph we see there are two break points okay one is here another one is here so when we are taking two different acids so the strong acid is hcl the weak acid is acetic acid and then sodium hydroxide is given here so uh, this is uh, let us consider the first case that is mixture of two acids with a strong base so when hcl and sodium hydroxide react we know h plus ion is in excess and as uh, hcl is reacting with sodium hydroxide automatically the conductance will decrease and then it won't be sharp because it is not exclusively hcl it is present along with acetic acid so acetic acid will begin to dissociate only after all the hcl has been used up because it is a weak acid so after the hcl has been used up then acetic acid will react with sodium hydroxide and then slowly the conductivity will increase because of the formation of sodium acetate ions and after this point we know uh, the sodium all the acetic acid has been used up and here after this it is only sodium hydroxide so the conductivity has increased tremendously so this is case 1 so this is case 1 so in case of case 2 we will make use of mixture of strong acid and a weak acid titrated against a weak base so when we are using a weak base we know uh, the reaction will be pretty slow again the titration is going to be the same a strong acid versus a weak base titration we know the the ions will decrease drastically and then the line will be nearly the same but here even 
we cannot go to the next stage because in between we are having a weak acid. So, the once the strong acid has reacted, then the weak acid will react with ammonium hydroxide and then ammonium acetate will be formed and then the excess ammonium hydroxide is very poorly dissociated and so we see the line as nearly neutral. So, this is how a graph will look for case 1 and case 2. So, so uh, two, two different uh, graphical representation are shown in the uh, single graph here itself. So, uh, when it is a mixture of acids, we will have two breakpoints. So, now let us go to this question. So, let us observe these graphs and from our understanding of what uh, we have seen in the earlier slide, we will try to solve the graph and find out which is a graph that matches with a strong acid and a weak base. So, let us consider a strong acid and a strong base. So, in a case of a strong acid and a strong base, we saw that the acid con uh, conductance will be very high and it will decrease drastically and then it will increase drastically because both of them are strong acid. So, uh, this is actually a, a curve is due to a strong acid and a strong base. Now, let us see the next case which is HCl that is strong acid versus a weak base. So, in case of a strong acid versus a weak base, we know as the uh, uh, strong acid has a higher conductance, the value will be very high and its uh, neutralization leads to drastic decrease in conductance and because it is a weak base, the conductance will remain nearly same after the equivalence point. So, graph B is actually due to a strong acid and a weak base. The next graph is actually a graph where we see two breakpoints. So, this graph shows two breakpoints. So, this breakpoint and this graph also shows two breakpoints, whereas the first two graphs shows only one breakpoint. So, because there is only one breakpoint, so it is just a titration between an acid and a brace. But if it is having two breakpoints, then we know it is a titration of mixture of acids and a base. So, let us see the C graph. In the C graph, we see the conductance is very high, whereas in the D graph, we see the conductance is very low. So, from these two, what do we understand? The C graph, the conductance is very high because of a strong acid such as HCl, whereas in the D graph, the conductance is low because of a weak acid which is acetic acid. And then, we also see it goes down and then it increases slightly and then it goes up. So, this is a classical example of a weak acid, sorry, the, this is a classical example of a strong mixture of strong acid and a strong base, sorry, strong acid and a weak acid reacting with a strong base because here the conductance is increasing very sharply. So, it must be due to uh, the mixture of HCl, acetate and sodium hydroxide. That is why we are getting this. Whereas, in this case, what do we see? This is actually acetic acid, then we have sodium acetate, then it remains, you know, uh, nearly uh, the same. So, it must be due to the reaction of a weak acid and a weak base because um, this is nearly the same after the increase. So, this is how we conclude from this particular question that the answer to this particular uh, question is strong acid with the weak base uh, choice would be B. Thank you, like and subscribe.